Welcome to Fueled by Impact. My guests today are Candace and Lauren Henry. Candace and Lauren are top-rated university professors of leadership and co-founders of Aretios, a company dedicated to helping leaders and young professionals learn how to lead well and live the life they were designed for. They bring over a decade of study in leadership and personal growth and 13 years of experience as leadership trainers. Through their work as success and influence strategists, Candace and Lauren help people clarify their purpose and develop their influence so that they can live a life full of success, of excitement, and meaning. I bring you my conversation with Candace and Lauren of Aretios. Well, welcome, Candace, Lauren. I'm so happy to have you guys here. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you so much for having us. We're excited to be here. Yes. Well, I want to dive right in. I have introduced everyone to you. With that being said, I sometimes like to give people an opportunity to share a little bit about themselves. Sure. I'm Candice, and this is my sister, Lauren. And so as far as how our whole journey got started in, in leadership and personal growth, being sisters, our parents were some of the first to really introduce us to leadership and personal growth at a very young age. And um, a fun story that always comes to mind when I think about going back to that uh, moment is that we took a lot of ballet classes growing up and our mom, instead of playing music in the car on the ride to our classes, would play positive self-talk tapes. And so that was just like one <laughs> little funny instance of like how intentional they were about trying to create that positive environment that then really benefited us. Yeah. Wow. So we, we were always reading a lot of positive, encouraging, uplifting books as opposed to watching a lot of TV. And um, we would kind of tag along with our parents to the business conferences they would go to and we saw everyone taking notes. And so we would take notes too because we're <laughs> like, this is good stuff. I guess this is what we're supposed to do. Uh, and that's kind of where those dreams of speaking and starting a business and doing uh, ways to give back through philanthropy all sort of started with us. And we started to be um, experiencing the benefits of leadership and personal growth in our lives. Yeah. And I think that really inspired us to want to continue applying leadership and personal development to our lives. And so a big part of our growing up years, we attended an international leadership training program for many years. We became leadership trainers for young adults because we want to then share that same positive impact with other young people and then went on to get our master's degrees in executive leadership. And then now we teach courses as university professors in leadership. And through our teaching, we started to see not only do young people really respond well to this, but there was a younger voice missing from this conversation. And that inspired us to start our own company, Eretios, where we work as success and influence strategists, uh, teaching young professionals and entrepreneurs how to lead well and live the life that they were designed for. And so can you uh, talk to people a little bit about Aretios and actually maybe even the brand and what, what the backstory is there. Sure. So a lot of people are curious about what the name Aretios yeah. <laughs> means. We get that question a lot. And so here's a little bit of that backstory on the name. The name Aretios actually was inspired by a Greek word that is arite, and that means an attitude of excellence or um, virtue or purpose and um, kind of speaks to living to a person's fullest potential. And back in ancient times, they would use that word arite to denote someone's bravery or skill um, or someone's incredible effectiveness. And so we loved that concept because that summarized so much of um, what our life's mission is. And we wanted to encourage other people to kind of um, link arms with us and do that as well in their own life. So we created the word aretios, which means a life full of purpose, full of influence and adventure, and living to um, your best self, living a life of integrity and uh, inspiring others to then do the same. That's beautiful. So maybe we can just start off with purpose. Talk to me a little bit about what does it mean to you and how do you potentially try to bring people along their own journey of discovering their purpose in life? Yeah, so purpose is so important because it really influences everything that we do, right? And it helps us to have a greater focus when we are able to have a, a powerful why behind the what that we're doing. Uh, so it helps us to not only make our decision making process a lot simpler, you know, for mm -hmm. us, it serves as a little bit of a compass, like that North Star. So when we're trying to weigh all these different options that come into our path, we're able to look at, okay, is this going to help me move towards 
living more of my purpose. And if not, then even though it could be something really good, it might not be what we need right now. Um, Also, it serves as an excellent source of personal motivation. So in any journey, there are tasks, there are parts of the process that are just not as fun or maybe Mm -hmm. not the elements that draw on your strength. Exactly. And so, and it, it's just part of it. But when you know, like I said, that why behind what you're doing, you're able to push through. Um, and so it's been really helpful for us to use it in those ways. Our clients use it in those ways. It just brings so much more meaning to life. Yeah. It's really helpful because I think it's one of those things that we kind of um, hear a lot of about. You know, it's always like find your life purpose or discover your purpose. And a lot of people are like, That sounds great, but I I don't even know where to start. And so if we can give people very practical ways of beginning, like Lauren was mentioning, you can see how that idea of having a compass can really help you. So figuring out who it is you want to become, perhaps instead of what it is you want to do with your life, I think a lot of people get stuck on that career um, Mm -hmm. element of purpose, and that doesn't totally encompass a person's real purpose. So figuring out who it is we're becoming can really be a beneficial step in in terms of moving forward. If you're comfortable sharing, how would you articulate your own purpose? I think a big part of what we want to do um, is training leaders. That's one of the core elements of our purpose. And then as there's, for me personally at least, there's a few other things. I'm also a creative and an artist. So another part of my purpose is that I want to um, share beauty and inspire creativity. That way people are able to experience that. And then uh, kind of the same element that we talked about in Purpose, Influence, and Ventures. We want to live adventurously and give generously. Uh, those are some of the things that I would say kind of summarize our purpose, more of like those underlying themes. And then uh, it draws upon a lot of the strengths and passions that we have, you know, of traveling, of writing and teaching and speaking, like all those things are sort of like the skill set and then the passions and how we want to use that all together kind of creates our, our purpose. Uh, what, uh, if you don't mind me asking, what is your artistic background? What, what do you do? Um, I love to paint. That's probably my favorite, Uh, but we've done a lot. Candace mentioned earlier ballet, so we love to dance. (laughs) We did acting and singing, and um, but I I love painting. That's probably one of my favorites. Oh, that's great. What I love about the way that you just articulated that, and I think it's something that's really important for people to hear, is you talked about this multifaceted view of your purpose. And and actually, Candace, when you're talking about you know people saying like, okay, that sounds great, I want that, but what does that mean? Mm-hmm. I do think that that sometimes people do think, okay, like I was brought here for this one thing, and what is that thing? And that's you know the story for my entire life. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't sound like that's the way that you guys think about this. It's something more textured than that. So pretend we're let's say two, three years ago, and I am your student. And at this stage in my life, I was not in the best place. I was struggling. I didn't really know what to do next. I definitely was zeroed in, Candace, to your point about career. What I was doing in the path I was on felt incongruent with who I wanted to become. And I just felt stuck. I felt lost. And I'm sure a lot of people who come to you come in exactly that spot that I was in. How would you start to guide me to get in touch with this deeper sense of purpose? I think that is such a common theme, and so many people don't realize how many people do find themselves in that position. So I would say, like, just base level, the first thing to remember is, like, you are not the only person who has gone through this. I mean, I think back to when I was trying to figure this out, it's we all face those same kind of questions and feelings of, like, you know, is this ever, am I ever going to figure this out? What am I supposed to do? How do I know? Like, what if I make the wrong choice? And so the first thing is to know that everybody goes through this. The second thing is, like I was mentioning earlier, to start with who you want to become instead of what it is you want to do. Um, so one of the things that we advise people to do is to start making a list of some of the qualities that you want to develop as a person. Think about if I was going to live my best possible life, like what kind of person would I be? Who would I 
um, be as a friend? Who would I be as a family member? What sort of qualities can I develop? And then to start working on those things. So you'd start working inside out, developing yourself first. Even if you haven't zeroed in on that specific career path yet, um, you don't have to just wait around until a job opportunity opens. That is your you know, perfect opportunity. You can start developing yourself now, becoming that best version of yourself. And then by the time you're working through and developing those qualities, it's amazing what other opportunities do end up opening up to you. Mm. And then I would say from there, we like to take a lot of our clients through a process of looking at what they already have, you know, in their own strengths and abilities and what comes naturally to them. What are they the go-to person for? You know, what do they lose track of time when they're doing it? And looking at those strengths and those things that really light them up. And then seeing, okay, where do we see some overlap? It's also helpful sometimes just to weigh in with another personality test too. Mm -hmm. Not to, you know, say that that is who you are, but it's another piece of data that you can then use to look at and say, okay, where are those underlying themes? And then that's where you get to what you were mentioning earlier, where you see those underlying themes of, okay, we, we love teaching, you know, in our case, and we love leadership and personal growth. And okay, what, how could we do that? And there's a lot of different ways to do that. And Candace and I do that in currently two ways. You know, we do it through the academic space, as professors, and then we also do it through our business. So it just shows that in different seasons of life, you might live out your passion and your purpose differently. And that's fine. And that's why it's not just a certain job title or a career, but it's more about seeing the skill set and the, the passions that you have and then using them to serve different groups of people in different ways. Yeah. Do you have, are there personality tests that you favor in terms of what you guide people to use? Yeah, I actually think there's a really um, fun version. I think it's of Myers-Briggs, um, but it's 16personalities.com. And that one we've used in our classes um, yeah. at the university before. And then also we're both like fans of taking personality tests. We've taken a number of them. But this one seems to really give a great explanation of um, different facets of what that personality type could look like and even suggested ideas of how to use that, not even just in a career, but just in different areas of your life. So definitely recommend that one. Yeah. Okay. I'll have to check them. I'm not familiar. I'm certainly familiar with Myers-Briggs and that mm -hmm. was a big, I remember one of the places that I used to work, that was one of the ones that they used to try to build people's self-awareness and improve teamwork mm -hmm. and so forth. Um, one last question that I had on purpose is, so I, I know it, it's not something that is just going to be an overnight thing for people to discover. Right. What, what kind of expectation do you set for people in terms of like the journey of actually discovering a purpose? Like how long does it take some people? What, you know, how, how deep do they have to go? How, you know, straightforward is the process? I think it's going to look different for any for everyone. Um, in my experience, so Candace kind of mentioned earlier that we both went through this. So and which was an interesting struggle in itself because <laughs> I'm very much the person who likes to have a plan and know what I'm going to do. And for the life of me, I could not figure out what I was supposed to do. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> I went through that process of you know for a couple months, I think I just sort of took notes of every time I found myself doing something that either I was like, you know, that was really fun. Or someone came up and complimented me on what I was doing. I took notes and started to make these lists of here's things that I like doing. Here's things that people tell me I'm good at. Here's things people come to me for help for. Um, and it was a process. I mean, I feel like it would even we would sit there because yeah. I, I did the same thing. And so I was like, look, this is what kind of helped me. You know, why don't we try this with you and like vet out this <laughs> option <laughs> to see if it really works. And it's so helpful even to have like a second person's opinion because to talk about it, yeah. yeah, you can look over things. And sometimes, you know, we're so close to our own skill set that we miss a lot of stuff that we're oh, like, yeah. oh, yeah, of course, like course I do this but we don't that even doesn't think mean... about it but then mm -hmm. for other people it could be yeah. a real challenge so yeah I mean it could take anywhere from I think you'll start to see more clarity within you know a week or two weeks as you start doing this but it, the level of clarity and what that's going to look like for you in your life could take even years you know it just depends on um, the person and the situation but I think yeah. the thing that you brought up Lauren that's so helpful is that idea of that your purpose can look like a skill set that will shift and maybe adjust 
in how it's utilized over time. So, you know, maybe for the first season, you're like, oh, okay, I'm going to be a teacher and I'm going to teach in a school. And that's wonderful, you know, if that works out. But maybe that idea, like I think back in my own life, um, using the theme of teaching, like even when I was little, I would always like, play school with Lauren and she was, a, I was very, a good student. She was a great student, <laughs> both in my class and in real good. life. Um, oh, um, but yeah, you know, it's funny to think back of, you know, we all have these giftings that are kind of interwoven to our life um, through many different seasons and it's going to look different based on where we're at. So to just remember that, okay, maybe we have clarity for Um, what this season is going to look like, but don't be discouraged if things change because that skill set is still valuable. You just might get to use it in a totally unexpected way. And that doesn't mean that you're not living in your purpose just because you don't know the long, you know, end goal. You know, you can be living in your purpose because you might need this season of preparation, whatever it is, and you might not figure out why until later on down the road, but you might need exactly the current circumstances that you're in to be able to step into what's ahead. Mm, okay. Yeah, that uh, totally resonates. And it uh, it is something that I'll bet you guys see a lot. It's something that I have wrestled with myself and certainly other people it's a theme that comes up a lot, which is this notion of, you know, there's the things that come your way. There's the opportunities that present themselves. And the question sometimes is like, you know, how much, if I think I'm headed there and then these things come in that may or may not be exactly what I thought, how do I make that decision? How do I, you know, a job opportunity comes up. How do I decide, hey, is this actually on point or is this going to take me off my path? And how much do I need to be proactive about trying to get myself from point A to point B versus accepting and surrendering a little bit to the process? How do you guys think about that? I think the first thing to keep in mind is the idea of flexibility. Um, You know, your, your overall vision is probably going to shift and change again as you go through different seasons of life but your goal that um, underlying purpose if you know that skill set you can always use that as your compass or as your um, like sounding board you can always compare it against that and say does this job help me to build certain skills that I know I'll need you know with what I'm wanting to do later on or does it align with who I know I'm you know becoming as a person and so you can always use that I know we've definitely weighed different opportunities against that clarity of purpose and certainly if you're in that discovery it is a little bit more challenging but just going back to that understanding of skill set can be really valuable too but keeping that flexible mindset you know we we don't know what happens next and so if we get so hard line and stuck on a particular um, opportunity or even a career of some kind and we say this is it for me either you know I get this job or I don't you know I'm not I'm not doing anything else um, I think that really can keep us back from other opportunities that could be even more beneficial but we're just not willing to see them as a potential growth opportunity yeah yeah, that makes sense. And it's um, it's something that I know in my own life, the the bar- the inner barometer, it needed to be trained <laughs> to be able to kind of more intuitively feel whether or not something was was the right step to take or not. And that I think is something that a lot of people, you know, we live so much in our heads. And mm-hmm. so it, a lot of times it's very much like a, a rational approach to everything. Like, will this advance my career? Will this set me up for the next thing? Will this? And I certainly in leadership roles have had a lot of people who that's the way they tend to think, or at least that's the way that they kind of present themselves. And a lot of times what I want to try to encourage people to do is like get in touch with a different place in yourself because the answers aren't always going to come from up here. Mm-hmm. And it's it's not always easy because we are so conditioned to sort of try to think our way out of out of everything. So definitely, and I think it can be um, a tendency for all of us to 
once we start taking the steps on maybe it's developing a certain skill or you're in a job and then you think, all right, maybe I'm here because I'm supposed to work my way all the way up. And we start like we go from like zero to 60 really fast. <laughs> and it, it may not be that we're supposed to work our way up to being a, an executive in that company. But maybe we need to be there to get the experience to meet certain people that will open doors down the road. Um, and so that's where we have to be willing to not be so tied to one specific route like Candace was talking about. And Candace, I like to say, like, we hold things loosely, not in the sense that we don't care for them or give them our best effort, but that we don't find our value and our worth and our identity in a specific goal or a specific opportunity or role that we have at that time because things will change um, as we move forward. And so we personally navigate a lot of this through trusting that God has the best plan for our life. And we just do our best to steward well what we have in our lap, in our moment, right in the moment right now. Um, and then, cause really that's all we can control is like what we presently have. Yeah. And it's um, that, even that notion of I am right here and maybe the only thing I see is that next step and that's all mm -hmm. I can see. And I'm not necessarily clear on everything else after that and that's okay i think that's that's certainly really important for people to to remember as well so can you introduce to me and to the audience the best life blueprint so we look at life um as being comprised by three main elements that really help us to unlock our very best life whatever that looks like and these are three principles that will work for you if you put them to work no matter what your starting point is. And I think a lot of people get stuck there because they think they have to know a lot about right. leadership or they have to know um, maybe even what their purpose is to get started. But this really summarizes the whole way of what we feel is living your best. And it's purpose, influence, and adventure. We can kind of unpack um, each of those ideas. The, the first one we've talked a little bit about is, is purpose. And the whole idea is that we need to live our lives inspired by purpose. And the first step with that is realizing your potential, where you expand your horizons about what is possible for how you can live life. Uh, for us, that happened as we started tagging along with our parents at those business conferences and seeing what these people were accomplishing on stage. And when you're able to see, okay, you know what, there's more that is out there that I could do than just what everyone else around me is doing. It kind of lights that little, you know, spark in you that you want to be a little more intentional with your life. Mm -hmm. And then that's where you begin that process of purpose that we talked about, where you're able to shift from being controlled by circumstances, which is where a lot of people live. They just let other people's agendas and other people's priorities dictate their schedules and the choices that they make. But instead, we can shift to becoming powered by purpose. A big part of that idea of being powered by purpose really comes from being intentional with your input. And this is things like making sure you have the right role models and mentors in your life um, and simply aligning the input that we take in on a daily basis, things like what we're listening to, what we're watching, what we're reading, you know, movies, music, social media, all of that has a big impact on who we're becoming and where we're going. And so yeah. this is something that I challenge all of my students in class to ask themselves. And I definitely have to ask myself this on a regular basis. And it's the question, you know, is my input helping me to grow and get better or is it hindering my progress? And it's amazing. Those small things do really make a big difference there. Yeah. Do you guys, have you had uh, leadership role models that you kind of hold up as people who either have guided your own journey or that you share with your students? Yeah, I, I think there have been so many people. Of course, our parents have been um, amazing examples to us, but we studied under uh, Skip Ross, and he's written several books, and he was a fantastic role model for us. We love John Maxwell and his material, Norman Vincent Peale, Robert Schuller. There's so um, many. And then a, a massive long list of all, all the people <laughs> that we read and, and listen to. But yeah, it makes a huge difference to have people like that. Yeah, and if you yeah. don't have someone close by, we always um, like to say that we're mentored from afar by different authors that we read or Jim Rohn, mm -hmm. one. people from the past even that we haven't gotten a chance to meet, unfortunately, um, but we feel like we know them through their writing um, years later. So you can definitely still have mentors even if you don't have a physical person that you're you're meeting with. Yeah, and that, that's kind of a, a good segue into the second element of influence in the Best Life Blueprint, which is that we need to be equipped to influence because we all have 
influence, whether it is, you know, just over your own decisions or your family, your coworkers. And so in, able to, in order to be able to use that wisely and well, we have to learn the strategies of the successful. And so that process looks like committing to studying personal growth and leadership. Yeah, and stepping into your role as a leader now, whether that is actually in a, a role, in a job, or an organization of some kind, or simply through your example. You know, you never know who's watching, and you are having an impact and influence on other people. So stepping into that role, and in that process, like Lauren mentioned, you really have to dedicate yourself to that ongoing growth. You have to continue to learn and grow and get better. We never truly arrive when it comes to <laughs> um, leadership or personal development there. And then the third element of the Best Life Blueprint is adventure. And so we need to be empowered to really live the adventure that is life. And a big part of that is surrounding yourself with an environment that is filled with encouragement. A lot of people um, try to work on this process by themselves, and it's very difficult to overcome a lot of those negative beliefs and doubts or past experiences that have, you know, unfortunately kept them from moving forward up to this point. But when you put yourself in an environment where you're encouraged, where you're supported, it is incredible the progress that you're able to make in terms of being able to move forward there. And a lot of what we, you know, believe about adventure and why it's so important is it's really a perspective. And it's kind of what you were talking about earlier, Mike, of being able to have that flexibility where you can see and then have the courage to seize the opportunities that arise because that's what makes life so exciting is the unexpected things that come into our path that are that turn out to be amazing experiences mm-hmm. and ways to use our strengths, our abilities to give back, to meet new people um, and create incredible memories and impact. Yeah, and I'd say remember that what makes the adventure of life so enjoyable enjoyable and fulfilling and exciting is to remember not to do the whole journey by yourself or for yourself. When you really have that um, long-term view of where you want to do something that's bigger than you, it makes it so much more exciting. So I have two questions. I want, if we can go back to influence and you talked about personal growth and that being a really important part of it. Are there elements of like underlying influence that you think are generally more important than others for people to pay attention to? I think communication is a really Mm -hmm. important one. Candace and I like to say that probably 90% of the challenges that we encounter, whether it's in life or business, come down to miscommunication or a lack of communication. And so a lot of leadership and influence is working with people. And if you are able to more effectively communicate your message and understand people, that will help you immensely. Definitely. And I think also understanding how people work together is a big part of influence. And if you just go in there with your ideas and your thoughts of how things should happen and with your timeline, you miss out on a lot of really great opportunities to learn from other people and to build a team that's really successful. So instead of just barreling in with your ideas, taking a moment to really get a full understanding of who's on your team and who's who else is at, like at the meeting or in the room, whatever that looks like, I think you can really have a bigger influence when you know who's working with you in order to make that goal a reality. Yeah, that's, we've, I'm sure everybody has worked for the people who are on the wrong end of that spectrum and what that feels like. Mm, and sure. it's like, hey, I'm not heard. I'm not having the kind of impact that I want, and let alone the fact that a lot of times the answers that you individually come up with are not going to be the best. So, right. yeah, and it's even that can be, It's an interesting balance, too, because you need to gather the input, but you can't tip so far in the direction of leadership by committee, (laughs) for example. And so, you know, at the end of the day, it's okay to say, hey, I'm going to make a call in this situation. Mm -hmm. However, not until I've heard everybody, not until I've really taken on board all that feedback along the way. So... How about on the adventure side, maybe more, I, I want to start with personally for you guys, what are some of the ways in which you've used adventure in your life? What are some of the adventures potentially that have been in most impactful in your own personal journeys? We love um, 
adventure. We love travel. And for us, a lot of the powerful life lessons that we've learned have actually come from different adventures we've had on on travels. And, Mm -hmm. you know, if you think about someone saying the phrase like, oh, I'm going to be adventurous, usually it means they're going to like step out a little bit. They're going to try something different. They're going to be a little more curious. And then that's where we learn and we get outside of our comfort zone. There have been so many different adventures. I know one that comes to mind for me is we were in Italy. We had just gone to lunch. It was a beautiful, relaxing day. And we decided, oh, we'll go like walk around the hotel property afterwards just for fun. And so we start walking. We see this little path kind of like in a garden area. We're like, that's nice. So we just keep following it. Well, soon we find ourselves like swirling up this mountain that we had no idea. Like this Oops. is not like, like what we're we in sandals, to do. like not at all hiking attire. Um, and now we're like way above the hotel. Like we are looking down on this multiple story hotel, but we're almost at the top. So we kind of figured like, okay, let, let's keep going. And so we get all the way up there and it turns out to be the most spectacular view. And it was just such a good lesson that, you know, sometimes the unexpected venture, uh, unexpected adventures turn out to be the best ones. And we have to be willing to follow what's happening, mm-hmm. um, even if you don't feel prepared or ready, you know, like we weren't expecting that. We weren't, you know, dressed for that, but it turned out to be one of the best views we saw and a really fun experience. So, so many life lessons like that um, for us come through adventures, and I think it's good for people to get outside of their comfort zone, try new things, and incorporate fun into their life. Yeah, I think it doesn't always have to be, we certainly love the travel adventures, and that is always an enjoyable um, thing for us to prioritize in our schedule, but incorporating adventure can really look like many different things. Um, It could be taking that incredible dream trip that you always wanted, or it could be something as simple as trying a new restaurant or um, doing something that maybe just changes up your daily routine. You know, it's, it can be something very small. Yeah. That like really, drive home from work a different route. Yeah. Just, just it to totally try it, you know? shifts your perspective on things. And that is what's so wonderful about adventure is it pushes us out of that same old routine, that same perspective. It challenges us to get outside of our comfort zone and see and do things differently. Yeah. I have noticed so much more lately, and I'm sure the more I look, the more I'm going to find, but I've I see so much more clearly now a lot of these unseen or previously unseen comfort zones mm. and limitations that I, I've been living in. And I think I, I'm curious how a lot of times it's like a blind spot for us. We don't necessarily realize that, hey, there's these potentially even smaller or daily life type ways in which we are actually staying within a comfort zone that we need to push ourselves out of or it'd be good for us to do that how would you potentially encourage people to be able to uncover some of those things that might be small things with outsized impact i think simply being aware is a great place to begin so when you are trying something new what is your first response and just getting in touch with that um, gut reaction when you're doing different things is a great way to start, you know, because sometimes we'll still give into that, like, oh, I don't really want to do this because I don't feel like doing that or because it's, um, you know, something I'm afraid of or whatever. But once we're able to first catch that, then we can say, okay, well, why? And simply asking questions. And maybe you ask yourself that or you get somebody else who is a trusted family member or friend and say, like, what else do you see? You know, like, are you noticing different things in my life or different responses that I have, or maybe even routines that I do often? And let's just talk about it. And getting yourself to explain why you do certain things is a really eye opening experience. Even if you're asking yourself that, you know, well, I want to have this job. Well, why do I want that job? And you can really go pretty deep if you ask yourself why several times to get to the root cause. And sometimes that will reveal something that could be, um, you know, a ridiculous little thing that's holding you back from something that could be very, very beneficial. So asking questions is a really good place to start. Yeah. The why, uh, asking why a number of times, like a, a yes. very recent example for me, I so I naturally more of an introverted person and 
I have seen how sometimes I will subtly find ways to avoid <laughs> contact, um, maybe at moments where I'm feeling closed down or something like that. And I noticed that and I noticed it the other day because I was asking myself why, going back to your point about why am I walking in this direction, like going, just going out for a, a walk during the middle of the day. And I realized it was like I was feeling closed and I didn't even really want to feel compelled to have to say hi to people. And I was like, what, what am I doing here? Like it, you always feel better when you see people and you, you know, hey, exchange a friendly hello, whatever. So, so I kind of flipped it on its head went for a walk around the block and like was trying to find people like, okay, it's my mission now to see how many people can I pass and just like say hi. And all of a sudden, like in, you know, half of the people are looking down and didn't, didn't, you know, probably were where I was before that walk. I felt so much better at the end of it. And I realized it was like, oh man, small, tiny little thing that for me is like exercising a muscle that I have to mm -hmm. exercise regularly because otherwise I default into these same patterns of introversion, shyness, and so forth. So that was such a good example too that you gave of how you know it can be easy to just fall into a routine of you know maybe someone says like oh do you want to come to such and such event and you're like no I, yeah I'm I'm busy that night and you're like wait a minute why don't I want to go and that's where you can then overcome those things or even just spread your wings a little bit or exercise that muscle like you said that will really lead you to meet new people and new opportunities you know you never know sometimes i think when we have a gut response to like not want to do something right away then we're like are we want not want to do this just because it's the easy yeah. out right, of it and yeah. it feels hard or uncomfortable but it could actually open something that could be amazing and then you know if it is a good opportunity we'll try and like push ourselves to go and do it anyway you know yeah, I totally get that. And I've got to imagine with your entrepreneurship hats that you're wearing, that that's got to be a big source of challenge and pushing you guys out of your comfort zone. Yeah, I think anything that's new like this, um, certainly being an entrepreneur means that you do everything, <laughs> especially at the beginning. Yeah. And so that's really challenged us to um, have to move past certain little things that maybe are uncomfortable or um, different, that it's just part of the journey. You have to be uh, comfortable being uncomfortable. And I think you have to be the one who's going to believe in your idea because mm -hmm. if you don't, nobody else will. And so that's challenged us to, we've had to answer a lot of questions. A lot of people are like, mm -hmm. oh, tell me what you're doing. And then they tell you all the reasons why it won't work or they ask you all yep. these questions. And, oh, yeah. and you have to be willing to, you know, dig deep and be like, well, this is why I'm doing this. And we believe that's what we're supposed to do. So we're going to do it. Or when you get a bunch of rejections or things don't pan out, like you thought, you got to dig back into that purpose, that why, and be like, all right, we're doing this because we want to help these other people and we're going to keep going. And so we've had to put ourselves out there to pitch ourselves to different opportunities and to other people and share what we're doing and do tasks we've never done before because <laughs> somebody's got to do it. So it's a really great growing um, process and it's been a very eye-opening and productive journey for sure. And how about um, from both from your personal experience, but also just in terms of coaching other people, self-doubt. I think for people, it's, it's common for everybody. I think especially if you find yourself as an entrepreneur, as a leader in almost any area where you are stretching yourself, you're naturally going to feel doubt you're gonna have all those little fear trolls inside you that are coming up and just saying like no you're not supposed to be doing this or you're gonna fail or you're gonna look you know embarrassing or whatever the case may be how do you guys approach that yourselves and how do you encourage other people to think about that well we definitely have felt that before and i think that that is just part of the process so knowing that that's going to be a little bit of a constant companion. You can say, okay, if that's going to, you know, pop up every so often, um, how do we combat this? And so we actually, strategy. yeah, we actually created um, like four little steps that we do that mm -hmm. help us personally. And now that we've seen it work for us, then we also have encouraged clients and others to do the same. But um, the first thing is to have a playlist. Music is a really valuable um, boost in terms of helping to shift your mood. And we also like to kind of 
couple that with visualization. So we have a playlist that we have certain songs on that help us to visualize specific goals that we're working towards. And that's a really great thing, very simple thing that we can put on as, you know, we're heading to a meeting or if we just need a pick me up at some point. The second thing, so playlist is one of them. Then going back to purpose, being able to keep that in the forefront of your mind, like I mentioned earlier, helps you be able to uh, push through. So if we are working on, you know, some project and it's just really like getting the best of us and we're like, I don't know about this, we go back to, okay, you know what? If we don't get out there and help these people, who's going to? It's not just about us. It's also about the people that we want to reach um, and help them live their potential. So we r- remind ourselves of that. And then next is understanding that it's a process and we have to give ourselves grace in this process of doing something new, learning a new skill. Anytime we're doing that, you, yeah, you're going to feel doubt like, oh, I don't know if I can do this or I'm not very good. Um, but we think of a really good example is like, we, you know, regularly switch up our routines with the trainer at the gym. And when you get a new one, it's usually not that pretty the first time around. Like you're kind of wobbly, like you're weak. Uh, And so, but you don't expect to be like level 10 on day one, right? So give yourself grace in the process um, that feel like it's okay to be a beginner as long Mm -hmm. as you don't stay there, as long as you continue to make progress. Yeah. And the last thing that's really helped us is that idea of patience. And this is everyone's least Mm. favorite thing. (laughs) I don't think I've met anyone who's like, yeah, you know, I love, I love being, (laughs) yeah. (laughs) Right. Yeah. I love being patient. No. Um, but it's one of the most powerful things that we can tap into in terms of kind of combating that self doubt is understanding that, you know, Things that we want to do if we're taking on a big task, if we're wanting to do something with lasting value, it's not going to happen overnight. We have to trust that process that Lauren was talking about and be patient in that. You know, that that takes time. You know, sometimes we want to take the next step or we want to go to the next level, but there might be other pieces or even people who are going to be part of our journey that we haven't met yet, and they're not ready to then intersect with where we need to meet them in order for both of us to be able to win. So remember, there are other pieces in play besides just you. And so when you have that mindset, you're able to be a little bit more patient in the process. Um, Certainly, I've been in many waiting seasons throughout my life. And um, I always remind myself, like, there are other factors at play here. We have to be sometimes willing to develop ourselves first before we're ready to take on that next step. Maybe we have to be patient with us as we grow and develop different character elements or maturity that will then allow us to be ready for whatever that next level is. Yeah. And patience for the seasons and cycles of your moods and even the Mm self-doubt itself, because one of the, I mean, I, I've, I've been amazed at the kind of the roller coaster that I have personally been on over the last couple of years. And sometimes it's just a matter of, you know, two days later, I wake up and I feel powerful or whatever. And now I go back to something that maybe I was putting off or didn't want to do because I was afraid of it. And I just charged through it. And all of a sudden, it's like, a complete different self-image takes over and it's like, all right, you know, all of that wasn't even real. Now I feel like a different person at that moment. Mm -hmm. And that little leveling up is useful for the next wave of self-doubt that comes whenever it happens to come. So how about like you guys, obviously you're, you're big into personal growth, your mental, physical, spiritual health or well-being. What do you guys do personally that you find works for you the best? Talk to me a little bit about that. Yeah, in the mental area, we can start there. Uh, Kids are always reading a lot of books. Mm -hmm. So we like to learn from different people and on different topics, all in that personal growth and leadership space usually is where we um, invest a lot of time reading. So we also make a point to go to events and conferences throughout the year, listen to podcasts and learn from other people. Uh, There's a really good quote. I think it's from Sean Nepstad, and he says, what we dwell on is what we dwell in. And so that's why we make it 
a point to have that good input and also be around and in community with other like-minded leaders and people who um, will continue to encourage us to grow. And then we're always like mentally also comes under, you know, setting goals and using positive affirmations and practicing gratitude and reflection and visualizing our goals. Those are all things we do in the mental area. Yeah, as far as the physical aspect of life, we really prioritize exercise, rest, and healthy habits. You know, making sure you're caring for your physical body is beneficial to both your mental well-being, your spiritual well-being. And so, you know, trying to incorporate activities that keep us active and are also fun Mm because nobody wants to be doing something that they (laughs) dislike. Um, So for us, we like to play tennis. We like to go for walks, which is also a great mental thing to like clear your mind. Um, Ride bikes or swim or whatever that looks like. Yeah. There's so many different ways. As long as we're staying active, um, that is a, a key component for us. But I also want to touch on the idea of rest because I think this is something that especially entrepreneurs can fall into, you know, we burn the candle at both ends without really realizing that we're doing that to ourselves. And rest is usually the thing that um, gets the brunt of that uh, intensity there. And so we need to make sure that we are prioritizing rest. So that way you can think clearly, you can um, function, you know, in day to day and, and be able to be your best. And I think that when we lack rest is when we end up making some of those questionable choices. So making sure that we prioritize rest is a really important aspect for us. Yeah, and rest as in sleep as well as boundaries. So Mm -hmm. giving yourself a time to shut it off and do something that's Mm -hmm. fun. Like for us, we take a break on the weekends and we try to just, you know, shut that off and then we'll pick it back up and we're even more energized to work on, you know, what we're doing on Monday because we had a break and then now we're like, okay, now we get to work on it again instead of just powering through endlessly with, you know, no end in sight. Uh, Last one you said was spiritual. This element of life is really important for us. I think you would probably agree. We sort of see it as like a keystone habit, Mm -hmm. meaning that when you get that one right, it will positively impact all of the other areas and help them fall into place. So for us, this looks like daily investing time, um, reading scripture, praying, studying God's word, also learning from other teachers, and then being in a community where we can discuss that and learn and grow with other people and friends and family and in church um, to keep us moving forward in that process. Yeah, it's it's been an um, ongoing process. You know, these are things that we've tried to develop as habits in our life over the years. And certainly things will adjust and maybe even shift a little depending on the season we're in, such as, you know, like changing a workout or maybe, um, you know, adjusting how many books we're reading if we're teaching. There's a little less time to be reading books (laughs) or reading papers. But, um, you know, we've tried to really learn from successful leaders and mentors who have shared with us or perhaps have um, shared in their writing and and teaching what's helped them to be successful. And we've really tried to be intentional about applying that in our own life. So making sure that we're doing the things that have helped others be successful. We're like, all right, we want to make sure that we're doing that. And we're also then receiving the benefit of personal growth and success. So it's a win-win. The keystone concept is really important too, and because they are so interrelated. I think everybody knows mm-hmm. that, but sometimes it's almost like until you see how interconnected they end up being and how much one chink in the armor ends up kind of being a domino effect. If I don't get the rest, then what ends up happening is I don't eat as well. And then what, hey, and then I'll have the energy. And so I'm not working out or I'm not working out as hard. And then I'm not as happy. It can be a vicious cycle or a virtuous one. I love the way that you guys uh, frame that. So um, before we uh, go to my last question, I want to make sure that we get to where is the best place to direct listeners? The best place to find us is over at our website. That's aretios.com. So it's A-R-E-T-I-O-S.com. And then you can also find us on social media at Aretios Official on Facebook and Instagram. Wonderful. So here is my last question for you, and I want to make it really tactical. People who are listening to this podcast are, generally speaking, people who care about personal growth. They care about self-improvement in general on many different dimensions. If you had some recommendations right now for next steps that people could take, what would you leave them with? 
Well, first of all, we applaud you for prioritizing that because that is the best thing to do that will lead you on a wonderful journey. Secondly, we would say that it's really important to think about your daily decisions and your habits. Um, Those are things that really end up determining our direction and eventually our destiny. And so as we talked about before, we did a lot of work studying and analyzing the lives of some of the world's most successful people. And we discovered that when we kind of laid out everyone's routines and um, things that they said were crucial in terms of helping them to be successful, we discovered that there are four habits that almost all of them had in common. And they are um, something that we have come to call the four power practices. So this is something that we use every day to help us be able to um, kind of lower that stress level, achieve so much more in our um, day-to-day, and continue to grow into the best version of ourselves. So if you want um, access to that specific method, you can actually find that on our website. If you go to aretios.com slash daily habits, uh, there's a free little sheet that has all about that there. But it goes back to that same idea that you were talking about, Mike, of even talking about, you know, your mental, physical, and spiritual well-being. All those things that we do on a daily basis impacts our energy level, our quality of decision making, and Mm -hmm. how we're able to show up to the roles in our lives. And so that's why if we can line up those daily decisions, we can kind of fast track our success on a daily basis because we turn those good habits into our gut reaction. And it makes it so much easier to make progress a lot faster. Wow, that's awesome. Leave people with a little bit of a cliffhanger. Well, you guys, this has been so amazing. I appreciate you being so generous with your time. I love what you're doing. And I want to encourage everybody who's listening to check out your work. Thank you so much for being on the show. Oh, thank you so much for having us. And and likewise, we're so inspired by what you're doing and the incredible community you're building and how you are sharing and pouring into so many people's lives with all of the valuable insight that you have. So thank you so much for letting us be a part of that. Got a cool story to share? Hit me up at MikeCav.com. That's M-I-K-E-K-A-V.com. Don't forget to give this a like, review on Apple Podcasts, and share it with people. It makes a huge impact and helps keep it going. But above all else, lead your movement.